flowing with joy. We could talk a little bit about it. Well, to the ego, opening is equated with vulnerability. Opening is equated with loss. Opening is equated with rejection. And, and with all of our attempts at love relationships, whether it's with parents or siblings or partners or whoever, there's a strong association in the, in the deceived mind or the sleeping mind with this sense of opening and pain. Like opening has brought pain. And those are strongly associated. So the Holy Spirit is now going to use relationships to reassociate in the mind opening with joy or opening with a feeling of connection and love. We're, we're being called upon, it seems like a risk or it seems like a huge leap of faith to the ego. Because the ego is like, I don't buy it. It's not buying it at all. It's like, if you're just going to get more of the same old, same old and it's going to be painful. You know, like, sometimes people will say, well, it's okay to be happy. I've heard that for years, people would say to me, it's okay to be happy, but just don't get too happy. <laughs> and I'd say, why? Is there something I should know about that? Uh, it sounds pretty good to me. Well, don't be too happy because you're in for a fall. It's more that dualistic view of, of opposites, like, oh, happy... Happiness is just the opposite of, of sadness. And if you get too happy, you'll be out of balance. You'll just like, you'll be completely out of balance. And I never did get the balance for it either. Balance between what? You know, it's like, but when you believe in a world of opposites, then that's the thing. That was the thing that was referred to last night where Lisa got, had her own metaphysical chapel in Pennsylvania and then, with her own metaphysical chapel to be to lead it, and her own Course in Miracles group, her Course in Miracles group warned her one day, one morning, don't get too joyful. When you start getting that from your Course group, that's, <laughs> that's pretty... You know you're ready to pop the cork on something. <laughs> and so she called me on the phone and she was like, David, I gotta ask you. <laughs> An email. I gotta ask you, is it, is it possible that you can be too joyful? <laughs> that was the question. I, no, that's, that's impossible. Yeah. Your, your joy is your inheritance. Whoever's telling you that is not talking the truth. Because <laughs> they told her to tone it down. And she was just getting more and more... <laughs> they sent a memo. <laughs> In the metaphysical chapel, she got the memo. Tone your joy down. It's, it's, it's frightening people. How, how can joy frighten people? Now that's really, from a course group too. Hmm. How can you get too joyful, you know? When you get into the state of happiness and joy, it will come through in appropriate ways, you know, as you move, seem to move through time and space, because that's just the way the Spirit is. The Spirit doesn't thrust anything on anybody. But, but as you're going into it, you know, you should never put like a limit on your happiness and joy, because it's unbound. It's completely unbound. So, to get back to the theme you were bringing up, it's, it's again, that's where it seems to take faith, because we've had so many memories and so many associations of opening up and pain and hurt. I mean, think about it. There was even songs. What was that song? Was it John Cougar Mellencamp? Love Hurts? <laughs> it hurts so good. Come on, baby. <laughs> Sometimes love don't feel like it should. Hurt so good. You know, you, and, and when you're first listening to it, you start... And then you like, you start to get to a point of metaphysical advancement and development. You're like, that is sick. That's absolutely sick. But but when you're going through it and, it and it does hurt, then you know you have those associations. That's why, you know, you it's part of the catharsis. The catharsis. It's part of the catharsis. It's part of the healing. It's part of the release. 
So all we're saying is just trust it in your, in your expression sessions. You'll be with the same groups, you know, every day. And little by little, it's like when you're just coming out of a shell and you try it out. And you say, okay, I'll try it out on day one, I'll try it out on day two. You start to build more and more confidence with it, like this is safe. Psychotherapy, we all know that you have, there has to be trust in a psychotherapeutic relationship for there to be healing. And that's why it, it just it has to be allowed to flower, to grow, to strengthen, you know, for the, there to be that confidence, you know, to open up. And no one will open up if they don't have a sense of trust and safety. So, it's just a little bit at a time. You'll, you'll know by the experience. That's, that's what it always is. Flowing with joy.